Chapter 396, Language Barrier The white fog instantly engulfed the entire Kochang like a tornado and just like the other remains. Those tour guides and boatmen who had just left Pattaya still had not recovered from the shock. Had the Golden Foundation not chased them away in advance, they could hardly survive in the remains. Unlike the Heavenly Network, the practitioners here would never put in much effort to save commoners for selfless reasons. On the other hand, at the Baymang remains, the Heavenly Network spared no effort in rescuing all ordinary soldiers inside. After all, an inaccurate aim of the bullet would be completely useless against the skeletons. As the doleful wailing roared past Lu Xu's ears, a blanket of thick fog rolled over him. Before he could realize it, Lu Xiaoyu's hands had already disappeared from his. As expected, the randomization of one's position was certain upon entry into the remains. Just in the blink of the eye, gray encompassed the entire world. Beaches and forests had been replaced with pitch-black rocks, and there were no signs of any vegetation. Inky clouds rolled in the sky, pressing against the ground as though they were within reach of a single leap. But Lu Xu did not take the risk. What if there were unknown dangers hidden inside? The motion of the clouds seemed to have conferred upon them a soul, staring down at all creatures underneath. Glancing around, besides monstrous stones, there were only two people in Lu Xu's vision. They were Caucasian, but Lu Xu was uncertain of where specifically they were from. He climbed on top of a huge rock for a better view of the landscape. To his surprise, there was no one else. How big must the remains be for them to be so scattered? Lu Xu's brows knitted together as he tried to distinguish the slight difference in energy waves in the atmosphere. However, there was no clear indication of any variation in the spirit qi concentration. Then, Lu Xu raised his hand in secret to summon Li Dian's compass, but even the compass failed to identify the core region. This was unprecedented. Who would expect the abnormally uniform distribution of spirit qi in this remains? Then, how could he confirm the location of the core region? Meanwhile, the other two had already started a conversation. As far as Lu Xu could hear, they were actually acquaintances. Lu Xu could roughly understand them due to their straightforward conversation and relatively slow pace. One of them, a metahuman, suddenly turned to Lu Xu and asked in English with a friendly smile, Are you a practitioner or metahuman? How's your power? Hesitantly, Lu Xu replied in heavily accented English, pretending as if he were unable to comprehend his meaning. Can you speak Chinese? Refusing to buy it, Tandy tested the water with a few other questions, only to receive the exact same answer. Then, he whispered to his partner, he doesn't understand English. Although we are from different organizations, we can totally join forces now and test that Asian's capabilities. If he is weaker than us, we'd better wipe him out before looking for resources. Despite their low volume, it was completely audible with Lu Xu's extraordinary hearing. I agree. If he is stronger, get rid of him, the other Caucasian said. The two were communicating openly in English with the assumed language barrier as their defense. They had met each other in Europe as two low-level individual practitioners. In fact, the environment was not so friendly overseas and violence was a common scene. Thus, it was their subconscious reaction to exterminate the weak. As a matter of fact, they were considered rookies as well, both at the peak of Class E, but in their eyes, the barehanded Lu Xu did not seem like an expert either. Which expert would not bring any magical weapons with him? Among unaffiliated practitioners, the two's capabilities were slightly above the average. Besides, the metahuman was a practitioner. He asked Lu Xu with a kind smile, Abdef? They knew that the alphabet was comparatively easy to understand. Lu Xu's face suddenly lit up as though in enlightenment, C. The two men drew a startled breath. How unlucky must they be to bump into a class C pro? Before they could recover from their surprise, Lu Xu added, I like C cup. From Tandy Carter's distress, plus 199. From. Who the hell asked you what you like? We were referring to levels. 
Is it the right time for such discussions? Tandy explained again patiently, you. Abdef? Lu Xu mused for two seconds, frowning, Abdef, Hitchcomb, OPQ, RST. Why did you start singing? The Caucasians were utterly confused. From Tandy Carter's distress, plus 199. From. Game over. No communication was possible. But it would be too rash to take action now. They decided to continue with the safe option, hold on. We can take action later when he finally reveals his abilities. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was already mocking them secretly. Apparently, the conflicts abroad had intensified to a large extent for them to internalize such an aggressive mindset. Tandy suddenly frowned, do you not speak English? Lu Xu gave an English reply, hello. The Caucasian metahuman hesitated, hi. How are you? The Caucasian almost burst out laughing in annoyance. I am serious, but do you see what you are doing? He did not give up. Do you seriously not understand English? What class are you? Metahuman or practitioner? I'm fine. Thank you. And you asterisk? Asterisk a typical line in China's primary school English textbook. From Tandy Carter's distress, plus 199. Tandy took a deep breath before cursing, foolish. F asterisk asterisk KU. From Tandy Carter's Distress, plus 666. From. The sudden twist caught them off guard. Tandy had the urge to confront Lu Xu straight away, so turns out that you actually can understand English? Awkward. Just now, Tandy had purposely picked a word not found in daily conversation vocabulary books. At a moment of life and death, it was a wise choice to expect the worst. Which was, Lu Xu could understand their conversation completely, and he was indeed stronger. They suddenly became cautious, ready to attack any time. There was still a slim ray of hope though, that the young Chinese man in front of them was really just a newbie. So what if he understood? He would not be able to talk when he was dead. However, in the next instant, a legendary-looking spear suddenly appeared in Lu Xu's hands, supported in his shoulders. Despite his grin, his English was cold as ice, I'm afraid it'll be too late, even if you beg me for your lives now. Chapter 397, Gargoyles Lu Xu's fluent English was a clear message that there was no more room for negotiation, as their evil plan earlier was unforgivable to anyone. But the question was, neither of them saw where the spear had come from. Could it be a piece of invisible storage equipment? However, in individual practitioners' knowledge, such items only existed in legends and belonged to superior figures such as the leader of a famous organization, or a Class B pro. It was too rare, and basically associated with one's abilities. Judging from this, this Chinese teenager suddenly seemed very scary. His warm smile only sent chills down Tandy's spine. In a split second, Tandy made the first move. As twelve scalpels shot towards Lu Xu from Tandy's waist, the man immediately ran off in the opposite direction and hoped for a chance at surviving. Fully aware of his apparent disadvantage in terms of capabilities, for Tandy the best option now was to try his luck on bumping into a helper from the same country. Lu Xu understood at once at the sight of the scalpels that the man could control metals. The scalpels were fired at incredible speeds and blocked Lu Xu's way. But Class E was still a Class E after all. While simply standing still over there with a spear over his shoulders, Corpse Dog and Concealed Arrow had swooshed out from Lu Xu's celestial map. In the next instant, every single scalpel was shattered at once by a few folded lines in the air following the Black Corpse Dog's path. They were nothing but ordinary scalpels. Meanwhile, Concealed Arrow pierced through the air behind the two Caucasians like a white jade needle. Transparent waves rippled through the atmosphere as Concealed Arrow was already able to break through the speed barrier. Between the two daggers, Corpse Dog was more lethal and Concealed Arrow was faster. The two Caucasian metahumans were running for their lives. 
one of them had already lifted an earth wall from the ground in a futile attempt to slow down Lu Xu's attack. However, before he could run far, Concealed Arrow had effortlessly penetrated the collapsed wall and perforated the man's heart. The man shot a look of disbelief at his wounded chest, where blood was oozing out like a flower in full bloom. In the next second, a scarlet dot appeared between Tandy's brows, and blood started streaming down his face. Then, both of them collapsed on the floor. Lu Xu called back his daggers. At the current moment, he was an expert at utilizing corpse dog and concealed arrow. At the start, he had difficulty controlling two daggers simultaneously but his skills had improved in the process of flattening the snow mountain. Now, the daggers were like his arms and moved completely at his will. There was a major difference between instinct and the awkward control he had over them in the past. Lu Xu would never use his fourteen spears like bombs unless necessary. Speaking of which, it seemed a cool gesture to place a spear on his shoulder. He walked over to search the body's pockets, but soon cursed in disappointment, nothing. Just how bloody poor were they? In fact, that was the current plight faced by unaffiliated practitioners. No resources, no magical weapons. At this moment, a loud howling echoed across the remains. Lu Xu glanced around but was unable to determine the source of the sound. It appeared to be from the underground. Moreover, the wailing seemed to be able to pierce through everything, even the soul. Lu Xu frowned at the poor-looking barren land and black rocks. Aish, a wasteland. Suddenly, a strange noise from afar attracted Lu Xu's attention. There were two giant black monsters that soared towards the sky and dived back down again, they were engaged in a fight. Each monster had a pair of odd wings flapping on its back and human-like arms and legs with a stalwart build. They looked just like ferocious gargoyles that came back to life from the movies. Excited, Lu Xu immediately took to his heels. It felt like he had finally found a monster in this desolate video game landscape and instantly associated it with fantasies about gold coins and precious equipment. It was almost his instinct to conquer it. Lu Xu's thin build leaped forward among the rocks with remarkable accuracy. Under the dim light, the entire world looked like a sight taken straight from a creepy horror movie. But what he did not notice was that cracks started to form on some of the rocks he had stepped on, as they released dozens of gargoyles. They rose in silence, their eyes were shut on their sinister faces, as though capturing the smell of living creatures. Then, they opened their eyes, their gaze following after Lu Xu. In the next instant, their eyes turned blood red. Meanwhile, Lu Xu had reached the first battlefield he saw, where three Asians were giving it all they had in their defense against the two gargoyles. Lu Xu studied the gargoyles carefully and pondered about the effectiveness of corpse dog on such creatures. It would be wonderful if he could deal with them just like how he dealt with the terracotta soldiers in the Baimang remains. A good soldier never stained his blade with blood. The Asians were ecstatic upon seeing Lu Xu. Unexpectedly, though, they shouted in Japanese, please help us. Lu Xu was stunned. The Collection of Gods was the only organization in the entirety of Japan. Thus, logically, all Japanese speakers here were their members. Earlier M. O. Shingchi had mentioned that the Collection of Gods dispatched hundreds of people to the remains, the biggest team across all famous associations. Just like the Heavenly Network, this organization had similarly perfect conditions of a complete, time-honored system of inherited skills and a huge population. However, their land-scarce nature resulted in limited cultivation resources, forcing their practitioners to pillage materials overseas to accommodate for the needs of their own growth. Generally speaking though, at present, the average capabilities of the collection of gods were nothing impressive. Despite their leading high-end forces, they were no match for the heavenly network, unless a few Class A's could be produced in the near future. Nonetheless, it was a general phenomenon across all organizations that the number of low-level Class Ds, Es and Fs significantly outnumbered those at the top of the pyramid. Currently, the three Collection of Gods members were happy to have an extra helper against the difficult gargoyles. One of them was a Class D while the rest were Es, 
whereas each gargoyle had lethality of up to class D, coupled with their flying abilities. Therefore, a single misstep could be fatal. Chapter 398, Seizing the Swords Please come and help us. Please. Despite their use of polite expression, Lu Xu had no interest in helping them at all. Rather, he was more inclined towards the gargoyles. Lu Xu's inaction prompted the three collection of God's members to repeat again in English, help. Please. His initial plan was to observe the gargoyles' attacking techniques and collection of God's practitioner's cards. But an unintended glance over his back startled him, countless gargoyles were quickly approaching at the same time. When did this happen? Lu Xu had been busy running without looking back at all. He immediately rushed down from the black rock, shouting at the top of his lungs in Japanese, Don't worry. I'm coming to save you. Finally, all the efforts spent on learning Japanese proved worthwhile, though his head-twisting gourd had become a pile of useless scraps. In the past, he spent hours practicing the language and even trained his oral skills from locally made videos and movies. His native accent, coupled with the dim lighting that blurred his appearance in the distance, convinced the collection of God's members that he was one of them. However, when they turned to Lushu amidst the combat, the throngs of gargoyles behind him seized them in terror. Heck! Their faces turned ashen. What a bloody idiot, he will kill us all. From Saruta Kohaku's distress, plus 999. From Satatoya Sato's distress, plus 999. From. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was still shouting as he ran, Stay calm. I'm coming. But the three took on their heels without hesitation. How could they possibly win? Leave the moron to the gargoyles as he wished. They exchanged a look with one another, and a strategy was formed at once. Lu Xu would be the bait, while they fled as fast as they could. The sheer number of gargoyles was indeed beyond their capabilities. Moreover, they were unsure whether the new kid was a friend or foe, though his native pronunciation seemed to suggest no other possibilities. However, survival was always the top priority before internal unity. If there had been a chance, they would certainly have saved the newcomer's life. But now, only more lives would be lost had they all come forward recklessly. This logic somehow relieved the guilt in their mind. Rushing forward, Tsuruta Kohaku commanded, no words of this to the organization. Understood? Yes, sir, a reply sounded from behind. All three of them were startled as the voice did not come from any one of them. Following its source, they saw Lu Xu grinning widely, his teeth showing, Gomen Nasai. From Suruta Kohaku's distress, plus 999. From Satatoya Sato's distress, plus 999. From. The sincerity therein stunned Suruta Kohaku for a long moment. Without hesitation, he thrust his katana towards Lu Xu but the latter seized the blade between his fingertips and snatched it away with a swing of his arm. The sword was already out of Suruta's grip before he could react. Then, they could only stare as Lu Xu dashed off with the katana in his hand. In their gaze, the lone man was disappearing over the horizon, sending up a few gargoyles along the way. Cracks started to form on rocks in which gargoyles hibernated, ready to unleash the devils within any time. Game over. Why is he so fast, Satatoya Sato said in desperation. I've never seen him. He's not one of us, enmity flashed across Tsuruta Kohaku's eyes. They would not survive the day. What was unexpected was that this time it was way more dangerous than any previous remains. Even creatures at the peripheral region were of class D. Just when they were about to accept their fate, Lu Xu turned back. Satatoya Sato swung his katana towards Lu Xu, but his sword was taken away too. It was a breeze with unmatchable strength and speed. Satatoya Sato's attack action looked like he was offering his sword. But they did not stop on their feet. Lu Xu cast his gaze to the third man, as if saying, Your turn to hack me. Now. Quick. Just do it. 
From Saruta Kohaku's Distress, plus 999. From Satatoya Sato's Distress, plus 999. From Saruta Kohaku almost choked on his anger. What a jerk. He even returned specifically for the remaining swords. The third person hesitated for a long while. It was his first time to not dare to attack despite his burning urge. During that short period of time, they had made a significant contribution in distress points to Lu Xu. Dissatisfied with the long wait, Lu Xu took action to seize the sword himself. With a pool of starving divine water to feed, Lu Xu was also a victim of life's pressures. Anyway, he would not want to stuff his upgradable magical weapon with grass if the situation permitted. Eyeing Lu Xu's receding figure, the three of them were now totally despondent. Having reached a safe distance, Lu Xu turned to observe the battlefield carefully. Like ravenous vultures, two dozen gargoyles were circling in the sky. In the next instant, the pack hurled themselves at their vulnerable prey. It was only until then did Lu Xu have a good look at their razor-edged claws. Then, each of the gargoyles had split at the center, turning into a giant mouth lined with irregular sharp teeth like a saw. However, it seemed that the three Japanese had no other trump cards besides some body tricks and the stolen katana. In his last attempt, Satotoya Sato raised a hand against a gargoyle and emitted a thunderbolt from his palm. Surprisingly, the man was both a practitioner and a metahuman. But his attack seemed totally ineffective on the gargoyle. Lu Xu was shocked by their resistance against magical attack. If that was the case, how about those element-type metahumans? But a second thought revealed another possibility. It might still be effective to convert elements into physical attacks such as water blades. The three fought till their last breath, they were eventually torn up and swallowed by the monsters. Then, the gargoyles soared into the sky again and aimed straight at Lu Shu. Having gathered enough information, Lu Xu sent out both Corpse Dog and Concealed Arrow without further hesitation. When Concealed Arrow sliced through a gargoyle's leg, there was no sign of pain nor fear like terracotta soldiers, and no record of any distress points. They had neither souls nor consciousness, but an inborn bloodlust. But another noteworthy point was that, in accordance to their strong magical resistance, their physical defense was weak. To their class D speed and strength, the damage that Lu Xu's daggers dealt was equivalent to that on class E's. Corpse Dog penetrated the skulls of the gargoyles, which all collapsed into a pile of crumbs. It was a slaughter in cold blood. It was Inferno, where no one was spared in the doleful wailing. By that time, such class D gargoyles were not Lu Xu's opponents regardless of their number. He summoned his divine water from the Seal of Lands and eroded the three katanas one by one. Why are gargoyles armless? Such a disappointment. Lu Xu sighed. Chapter 399, Reunion with Meng Jingchun It was a well-known fact that the Kochang remains would be perilous. But no one anticipated that it turned out to be a catastrophe for low-level practitioners due to the sheer number of gargoyles. Crevices were forming on the black stones following Lu Xu's trail but his corpse dog would immediately stab the gargoyles within, to the death, before they managed to break out of the eggs. Lu Xu suddenly felt like he was inside Journey to the West, where things could jump out from rocks every now and then. <laughs> Monkey King, what a fantastic being. His pace was slow, so as to allow enough time for him to spot any resources in the region. He had indeed discovered an ancient broken magical weapon in the rock crack. Despite losing its function, the rich spirit chi in the remains had gifted the weapon intense energy flows. It was the favorite food of the divine water. If there were more of such weapons here, he would not need to spend a fortune on developing his golden water anymore, Lu Xu thought expectantly. In the meantime, he heard footsteps approaching from behind. Quickly packing everything up before it was seen, Lu Xu turned around but was shocked at once and stunned the other person as well. It was Meng Jingchun, together with around 17 strangers. There were whites, blacks, and a few Asians. How did such a hodgepodge form in the first place? 
The reason was clear, though. Everyone was forced to join forces with one another so as to maximize their own chances of surviving in such a hellish place. Lu Xu's appearance brought a sense of security to Meng Jingchan, the sole Chinese in the team thus far. Casting his weak capabilities aside, it was still great to see him around. Are you all by yourself, Lu Mu? Meng Jingchan hastened her steps and showed no attempt to hide her surprise, did you see anyone else? It seems that there's an expert ahead who killed the gargoyles along the way. Lu Xu mused and pondered for a safe reply. After a long moment, he said, they were already dead when I came. But I didn't see anyone. Meng Jingchan was puzzled by his response. Unmistakably, Lu Xu was leading Lu Xiaoyu to the inner areas of Kochang earlier, which gave her the impression that Lu Xu was possibly a pro. Thus, she had a hunch upon meeting Lu Xu that those gargoyles were all killed by him. However, anyone that had dealt with gargoyles were well aware of how tough they were. Thus, one had to be overwhelmingly powerful in order to nip them in the bud. Since Lu Xu had no intentions to reveal anything else, Meng Jingchan cleverly asked no more questions. She had to get her attitude right if she was determined to work with Lu Xu. As an individual practitioner all along, Meng Jingchan had the choice to join Chinese practitioners' organizations overseas. But the development of such groups were always suppressed by native associations and left little benefits to their members anyway. In the past, she used to have high expectations of life abroad, including a high reputation in education, economy, and technology. But now, it seemed that nowhere could be compared to one's home. At the very least, she did not have to fight for her survival. Actually, she had plans to return to China, but her main concern was the welfare received by Chinese practitioners locally. Moreover, she could not decide which organization Liu Xu belonged to. Could it be the Heavenly Network? Unlikely. In her impression, their members were serious and dependable. But Liu Xu was almost the antonym. In fact, a meeting with Li Xiao would probably have changed her mind straight away. A person walked up from behind and asked in English, Is this your friend, Meng? What class? Meng Jingchan smiled, Yes, he is. He is a class E, strength type. They were expecting him to be the secret expert, but ended up being quite disappointed. However, it seemed totally understandable given his young age. Lu Xu noticed that the team seemed to be following a white man's lead. Meng Jingchan whispered to him, he's from the Phoenix Society, Class D, strength type. Quite an MVP in our battle with the gargoyles. It was unsurprising. Strength type metahuman's speed and strength outperformed those of the gargoyles and rendered them more useful than their elemental type counterparts. Suddenly, Lu Xu frowned at a short black girl who appeared to be fawning on the white leader. Meng Jingchan shot a glance at Lu Xu, a metahuman from the south of North America. You may not know it but there are quite a few females like her, who are willing to exchange other things for cultivation resources instead of getting them on their own. It was rather obvious what trade they were in. Although he disapproved of the situation, Lu Xu decided to hold his judgment, as everyone had the right to choose how he or she lived their own lives. Many who shaped their mentality with numerous socially accepted norms still led a miserable life. Let us just say, people have their own fates. But then, a sudden thought struck Meng Jingchan, was she not trying to seek help from Lu Xu as well, although she was unwilling to lower herself like that girl. Thus, she hoped Lu Xu did not get the wrong meaning. She studied Lu Xu's facial expressions carefully, only to see his pure, innocent eyes, without any misunderstanding. Before the white leader introduced himself, he asked in English in a condescending manner, Do you have any new discoveries here? Lu Xu gave him a wide grin, Thank you. From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 299. Did you understand me before you said thank you? What are you thanking me for? Idiot. Evan Walsh's face darkened. He enjoyed being the center of attention and admiration. In fact, he was only a greenhorn in the Phoenix Society, not a pro. But inside the remains, 
Not only were his peak class D abilities considered one of the top among unaffiliated practitioners, there were also girls throwing themselves at him for protection. He had heard about it from senior members in the society. Due to their monopoly of all remains in the U.S., many individual practitioner girls had to obey the secret rules in exchange for a ticket into the remains. Actually, they were not forced. Many girls were practical, and they were willing to worship the strong. Faithful heroes only existed on the screen, and many metahumans would never refuse willing girls. Affairs between metahumans and supermodels had long since become the most popular gossips in the West. In the meantime, Evan Walsh had given up on his conversation with Lu Xu due to the language barrier. A mere class E was too weak to pique his interest. Chapter 400 How Annoying Under the gray sky, Lu Xiaoyu was walking alone amidst strange rocks. In contrast to ordinary individual practitioners' ever present fear, Lu Xiaoyu was totally at ease in Anthony's secret company as he was ready to attack any time. A slit cracked open in the rock beside her, as if something was about to be born. However, before it made its debut, a blanket of gray soils rolled up like a mat and sealed the crack up. Maybe it was a completely unprecedented experience even for gargoyles. In the past, they either killed or were killed, but never had they been trapped in the stone. In an attempt to escape from the jail, the gargoyles inside collided with the interior of the rocks, like crazy, but to no avail. Soil and rocks reinforced by Anthony's elemental force were unbreakable with their strength. Now, their freedom of action belonged to Lu Xiaoyu. There are so many. And they have no money, watches or weapons. How annoying. Where is Lu Xu? Lu Xiaoyu complained. It was much less interesting than the Salt Lake remains that Lu Xiaoyu had visited last time. Previously, she looted a bunch of minions, including Naughty Pig and Big Cat. How awesome was that? But this time, the gargoyles were completely not in her control, not to mention their ugly appearance. Lu Xiaoyu could sense that these monsters were utterly empty inside their outer shells, without a trace of a controllable soul. At this moment, a group of three, consisting of a white, a black and an Asian, walked towards her. What a rare coincidence. Nonetheless, their guard against one another was apparent from the large distance between them. All of them froze for a second upon seeing Lu Xiaoyu, who had not been that visible at the beach. She had been busy eating snacks and teasing Lu Xu at the time. None of them expected a little girl here. In spite of being at the peak of her puberty and her relatively tall build, Lu Xiaoyu's youthful face revealed her true age. Truth be told, it was definitely not common to see such a young practitioner. Actually, against the backdrop of the remains, she looked more like a creepy doll in a desolate, old mansion situated in the mountains. Horror Stories Lu Xu had prepared a backpack for Lu Xiaoyu and himself as a cover for their invisible storage equipment. But Lu Xiaoyu had packed it back into her ring to save herself the trouble of carrying it. It might have helped with the misunderstanding had she carried a modern bag. Subconsciously, they had deemed Lu Xiaoyu as another magical creature rather than a practitioner like themselves. Lu Xiaoyu shot them a brief glimpse and clearly showed she had no intention of interacting with them. At that moment, a gargoyle imprisoned in a stone nearby started struggling violently. In addition to the trembling motion of the rock, though, nothing else happened but Lu Xiaoyu was perfectly quiet and calm. In their opinion, such composure was not supposed to appear on a little girl's face. If she was a human practitioner, should she not be flustered right now? She must certainly be a product of the remains. No matter what reason it was, the three of them had instinctively associated the girl's frosty expression with the current environment. In fact, their misunderstanding was understandable in the light of the multitude of factors here. Considering their commendable capabilities, Lu Xiaoyu's passiveness actually elicited the men's greed. Do you think this monster carries magical weapons? Anyway, there shouldn't be any powerful creatures in the periphery, should there? Let's kill her together, the black man agreed. Just when Lu Xiaoyu was about to leave, she raised her eyebrows at their phrasing, monster? 
Who are you addressing? Have you ever seen such a cute, pretty monster before? In the next instant, Anthony rose up from the surface with his typical foolish smile. His black foggy form and the creepy expression seemed to be an even better fit in the remains. Then, the three were dead. Under Lu Xiaoyu's control, Anthony searched the three bodies, which had been punctured into honeycombs by deep sea white sand. An angry Lu Xiaoyu was indeed a monster. But Anthony found nothing. Disappointed, Lu Xiaoyu sighed, why are they so poor? I wanted to rob someone and find a reunion gift for Lu Xu. I hope he has prepared me gifts as well. Honestly speaking, Lu Xiaoyu liked the place. There was nothing she needed to be concerned about, be it gargoyles or practitioners who tried to take her life. As soon as she moved on, in another direction, a stone cracked open again. Almost simultaneously, Anthony sealed it back up. How annoying. Meanwhile, Lu Xu followed his team. A temporary stay in a group of international individual practitioners with their own hidden agendas was a safe strategy, which offered him another layer of security when the conditions remained unclear. As a matter of fact, their plans were all about the same. It was always a fight-or-flight situation and in times of real crises, Lu Xu was certain that no one could run faster than himself. The strength type class D. Evan Walsh loved to hog the limelight, as though he had been overshadowed by other geniuses in the Phoenix Society and could only shine in a group of unaffiliated practitioners. Why did so many teenagers awaken to their powers? Simply for more attention, right? Although Walsh was only a junior, he had emerged a champion in the Canadian Canoeing League and enjoyed excellent results at school. Thus, he had an air of pride around him, and most members of the Phoenix Society were people like him. They had run into a number of gargoyles on their way forward. But Walsh had come up with a smart idea. Since gargoyles were only activated in close proximity, a slow advance would release them one by one, drastically reducing the pressure on themselves. During the combat, Walsh had always been the main attacker, as if his strength was boundless. Meanwhile, the Mexican girl seemed determined to cozy up to him and would offer Walsh care and support after every battle. Lu Xu was more than happy to save some energy as the gargoyles had nothing worthy to pillage. All this while, he focused his attention on the surroundings, mainly on the flow of energy, but it was in vain. There was no way to ascertain the direction of the core region. Thus, they had no way but to take it slowly. At worst, they might cross paths with the Class B pros, since no one's sense of direction worked here anyway. After Evan Walsh chopped a gargoyle into pieces, he intentionally showed off his sword. In spite of the frequent battles, there was not a single scratch on the blade, this was provided by our Phoenix Society. What do you think of it? In an attempt to please him so that he could continue dealing with the gargoyles while Lu Xu could continue to slack off on the side, Lu Xu immediately commended, 666 star dot. Asterisk 666, 666, a popular phrase in China used to show one's approval, compliment, or admiration. Although Lu Xu's admiration was clear in his tone, why was he not making any sense? For God's sake, was he really unable to speak English? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 299. Lu Xu felt wrong too. It was not his fault that the American guy had little knowledge in Chinese buzzwords. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we better